Due to climate change, in the last few decades the frequency of extreme weather events has risen. This leads to severe consequences such as landslides, flooding and storm surges, and rural landscapes around cities must be protected from these changes. The Operandum Project is a European project formed by 26 partner institutions from all over the world. They research nature-based solutions to adapt rural and natural territories to the impacts of the rising extreme weather events. This video showcases one of Operandum's nature-based solutions, which helps to reduce the threat of floods near the Elbe River in Germany. So we are situated in the lower middle uh, Elbe Valley, so we have uh, strong hazards by flood events coming from the whole catchment area of River Elbe. And the people living behind the dikes are afraid by floodings, and uh, that has become uh, more severe during the first decade of this century, when we had five very severe floods between 2002 and 2013. So, of course, the relocation of dikes would be a good method, but it is a technical method and it takes a long time. And so we looked for nature-based solutions. Stakeholders are, of course, a lot of uh, people living behind the dikes, farmers, groups that are interested in uh, managing cultural landscape, politicians within the municipalities, and, of course, uh, people who are working for water management and have to care for flood protection are also very important. Uh, and so it was uh, the idea to organize local stakeholder groups to inform them about the needs uh, coming up by water modeling and uh, the nature conservation needs and to look for local solutions. And <clears throat> if there is a decision that in special bottleneck uh, sites within the floodplain it is necessary to cut trees, organize a more smooth uh, water discharge, then you need to care for uh, vegetation management continuously because if you don't, then the trees grow up again and becomes worse than before. The idea was to, to keep some parts of the river banks open. Willow trees were cut there, then it was necessary to get uh, cattle. So we got experiences by the farmers who cared for the animals. Uh, what works best? For this uh, cooperative flat plain management is actually ecosystem-based management approach according to the um, NBS framework, it is not only that we use grazing animals that try to hinder the regrowth of vegetation, but there is a lot of organization around. So as uh, um, riverbanks are contaminated by dioxin and other pollutants, it is important that the animals are not in the um, food cycle and uh, are separated animals. So we finance and bought sheep and cattle from uh, the Biosphere Reserve Administration and uh, gave it to the local farmers and paid the local farmers for caring for the cattle. And that was one idea for uh, keeping special bottleneck situations open. And on the other hand, there were parts of the riverbanks where no farms were available, where we used machines. The potential long-term benefit the cooperative floodplain management is achieving um, is that the um, flood peak level is um, lower than if you would have the willow trees which are hindering the flood peaks. What we try is that the, um, the freeboard of the dike so that the level for the highest water level to the highest peak of the dike is you have some space left. If all measures are really done and the willows are not regrowing then uh, you have a chance to lower the high flood peak level uh, up to 25 centimeters, which is enough then for a high flood uh, situation that the flood is not growing over the dikes. The benefits and impacts of these interventions was that uh, People living here behind the dikes get more trusted in the biosphere reserve, in the, in the management of uh, the area of the floodplains. That built a good basis for uh, cooperation and common thinking about what is the best situation here. 
and a draft understanding for nature conservation as well, because it's a Natura 2000 site here and we have to consider that uh, we have uh, nature conservation regulations uh, that uh, should be borne in mind. And moreover, uh, a good cooperation between uh, different farmers and nature conservation has been developed and that was a benefit from floodplain management. I think that was very valuable. The best practice what is done here with the cooperative floodplain management is very easy to transfer also to other regions, whether they have floodplain management or also other management issues. So as it is an ecosystem-based management approach, you can really learn um, how this participatory approach works, that different institutions work together and all inhabitants and all farmers uh, who are involved in solving um, uh, copes against climate change can work together. And this is transferable everywhere.